you so much. Nice to see all of you. Um, and I think if we just think about that one page that she read for a second, we can go home, right? Because that was that's that that that's what tonight's all about. Yeah, um, one life at a time, right? An error-filled existence over time, little by little, um, correcting, improving. Um, evolving, and that's the focus for tonight. Um, the content I can take uh, no credit for. It, it, it all comes from Thought and Life, which is a book that was um, dictated uh, by the spirit Emmanuel and written, uh, psychographed by the medium uh, Chico Xavier. Um, this book focuses entirely on, on what I like to call thoughts, words, actions. Right? You think about it, You talk about it, you do it. Um, Chapter two specifically, uh, we're going to focus on tonight, and then obviously uh, a couple chapters from the Spirit uh, Gospel according to Spiritism. And I hope uh, you enjoy uh, what I was able to prepare. So let's let's jump in. We have what three hours tonight, right? Four. Oh, four. Okay, we. That's right. Daylight savings time or something. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, I like to define the topic sometimes, right? So. Will, right, from dictionary.com, pretty self-explanatory, right? It's, it's our, um, our ability to make decisions, the, the mind's ability to, to control the actions, right? Um, um, I have ADD, so sometimes um, I jump from thing to thing to thing. Um, and, and oftentimes I can remember as a kid, even as an adult to some extent, um, when you have something like ADD, you're accused of not having any willpower, right, or not having any will. And to some extent it's true, but I swear I have a, I have a medical explanation. <laughs> um, number two, right? The power of choosing one owns actions, right? To have a strong or a weak will. So that's the dictionary definition. Let's talk more about um, the will from chapter two from Thought and Mind. Um, Emmanuel asks us to think of the brain, right? The mind as, as a company, a corporation with a lot of different departments, right? The list could go on and on. What's he say here? Um, think about the department of desire, right? We all have desires. We all have um, uh, attractions to things. Um, he defines this as the department that controls our purpose and aspiration. It stimulates us to activity. It's true. You want something, you go for it, right? That makes a lot of sense. Another department he mentions, right, if we want to think about this, is the department of intelligence. Uh, intelligence helps us expand evolutionarily and cultural assets, right? What's another department he talks about? Um, Department of Imagination, right, uh, unites the riches of ideals and sensitivity. We can create nowadays whatever we think of. There's so so little limitations on, on creativity, right, thanks to technology and, and everything we've learned thus far as a society. The Department of the Memory would be another department. He defines that as where our archived experiences are stored. That makes sense. And, and again, the list could go on and on. But I'll give you three guesses. What, is he, what does he think the most important department is? Come on, he's sitting right here, right? The department of the will, right? Why is that, he says? He's because the will is the enlightened and vigilant manager, right? The CEO, if you will, the supervisor of the company that supervises all the sectors of our mental activities. Think about it. Desire, creativity, intelligence, um, all these different aspects of the mind. At the end of the day, what controls how they're put to use? Our free will, right? Our choice, our decision of what are we going to do creatively, what are we going to do with our desire, what are we going to pursue, what are we not going to pursue. And that's why I believe Emmanuel uh, described Will as the CEO or the manager, the most important uh, department of, of the human brain. So let's jump into that a little bit more. He describes the, um, the Will as the helm of the ship, right, where the captain is, right? And, and that captain is controlling all of those driving forces that are incorporated in our knowledge. He, he goes on to explain different types of energy, right? He talks about how electricity, which we all know what electricity is, right? We, we plug things into the wall and it works. Well, don't forget our brain, our body, is a, is a big electrical circuit, right? Thousands and thousands of miles of, of, of cable, if you will. But he calls that our dynamic energy. Magnetism, right, that, that we're grounded in this magnetic field that we live in, right? Um, it's very static, right? It's not, not dynamic, very static. And that thought is this electromagnetic force that, that brings a dynamic 
uh-ness of of electricity and the static magnetism of 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 of, of magnetism together and he calls thought being that electromagnetic force think about it we think about it and it, it there's there's mri studies that, that show this to us right we we can be sitting on a tropical island on the beach right sun in our face eating grapes drinking a, a cold drink right we can experience that physically or we can go there in our mind our thought we can envision that imagine that and the mri show the same thought same thing with pain someone can be pinching us or stabbing us with a knife we'll feel that pain right or we can just imagine that think about that in the mri right the pain or an emotional piece of that event and the MRI fires just as if you're going through it again. So thought is super powerful. Um, takes us places all the time. And the will, he tells us, he reminds us that the will is the captain of all of this, steering the ship. And when joined together, right, in all the manifestations of universal life, it's the thought, the electricity, the magnetism, those create our, our affinity, what we're attracted to, what we spend time with, also creates our, our lack of affinity, right? The things we avoid, the things we don't assimilate with, the, um, the, the things that, uh, the choices that we, that we make or don't make that guide our choices, right? That determine where we wind up next. Um, I'm standing here tonight, right? As you're sitting here tonight, what? A sum total of all the choices that we've made or haven't made, right? I chose to do certain things, I chose not to do certain things, I had thoughts, I didn't have other thoughts, and it put me where I am today in this life, talking to you. And we all can take um, different paths, but it's, it's the will joined with these different components um, that help us evolve, um, either slowly and painfully, or more efficiently with less pain, right? It's, a, it's up to us, it's up to our free will, it's up to our choice. Making sense so far? Awesome. If I make any mistakes, you let me know. Okay. Thank you. Um, he goes on to say, Emmanuel goes on to say that will is the de decisive factor, right? Um, he calls it the machine, right? Will decides the movement of the machine. Um, in other words, as, as I go through life, um, I'll take my drive down here today. Anybody drive the turnpike lately in Lake or Sumter County? No. Good for you. I'm envious. I My goodness. There's construction everywhere. Um, everybody's in a hurry. <laughs> Nobody looks in their mirror before they change lanes, right? Um, I have to make choices. I'm, I'm a terrible driver for what it's worth. I, I, I'm, I used to be. I'm much better now. But my point is, on that drive I make every day, the drive you make every day, right? And, and let's say you don't drive that far to work, but, but you, you work. You work with people. You have a boss. You have coworkers. Whatever, whatever our, our journey is on a daily basis, we have to make choices, right? And today, I mean, I'm, thank God, right? Um, um, I could have died very easily today because there was an opportunity to do something stupid, right? To, to, to get ahead and maybe not be late tonight because I was worried about being late. And fortunately, because I've been studying about the will, I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit back. And sure enough, uh, the accident happens ahead of me, right? Um, and I avoided it. But my point is, as we're living this life, we all encounter um, decisions that we have to make. And, and what we choose to do in every given moment creates our next moment of reality. Making sense? Awesome. Um, and what he describes here is, is the brain is the dynamo that generates the mental energy according to its own capacity. I can only make decisions. You can only make decisions up to the limit of your involvement, the limit of your capacity, right? And just like the, the page in this book earlier, um, think, be thankful for, what was it? A, a day of uh, mistakes, right? And it's through those mistakes and, and, and revisiting those mistakes right, that we learn and we grow. So as he talks about our, our mental energy according to our own capacity, um, I'm going to relive, you're going to relive mistakes that we, where we made the wrong choices previously. And today's a new day. I'm going to respond hopefully differently. I'm going to grow. I'm going to evolve. And as I do that, as you do that, guess what happens? Our mental energy, our capacity elevates, evolves. So little by little, um, we evolve and become um, less tied to matter, less tied to 
instinct, less tied to um, ego and pride, and more tied to love. Easy, right? All right, go out and conquer. Okay. Um, and, and he reiterates, right, that within the will, we have the control to direct this mental energy in one direction or the other. It's totally up to us. Um, we simply have to um, apply ourselves, apply our will. Sounds so easy, right? So easy, in fact, right? When you read this, it says, the use of our will establishes causes that will determine the problems that we encounter on the way to our destiny. Now, how many of you like to eat meat? You know that stuff's bad for you? Clogs your arteries, gives you high blood pressure, right? Listen, I, I love meat too. Give me, give me a, a grill and some picanha and, and uh, I'm, 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 ha I'm a happy guy, right? But I know it's bad for me. I know that carrying this extra weight's bad for me, right? But I still make the choice to indulge, right? The point with the meat story is we know how we live. We know right from wrong. We know when we bend the rules. We know when we're not following that example that Christ taught us. And yet we choose. What do we call that here? This is one of my favorite slides. Cause and effect, right? Um, I know that the choices I make, when they're wrong, I, I, I kind of know. It's, it's not, it's not. A, okay, I know. <laughs> you got me. I'm trying to rationalize, Let, lessen the offense. You're good. Man, she, she's something else. Um, where was I going? Um, as, as I'm making those choices and I know that I'm in the wrong, um, I've been studying Spiritism um, almost 19 years, I think, right? officially, that I, that I knew it was Spiritism. Um, the cool thing about this, right, for all of us, is it's a double-edged sword. The more we know, the more we know, right? So when I make mistakes now, when I'm not living right, um, it hurts more. Because now I'm not ignorant about it. Now I'm not in the dark. I know... You know, the little angel over here, Al, come this way, but I'm still following this guy with the horns sometimes, right? But when I follow him now, it's not like, oh, I'm only human. That's the way I'm wired. I can't say that anymore because I know the difference, right, between the two. So as I'm living this life, um, the mistakes cause more pain, I think, immediately, right? Um, and I think it stimulates... Um, a, a stronger learning effect, if that makes any sense. I'm far from perfect. I'm far from, from being done with this. But I know today, 19 years later, I'm in a much better place than I was before spiritism, before making a conscious effort, before learning uh, what I know and what I'd like to share with you guys. So does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Very good. Sometimes I'd like to go back. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, as they say, right? Yeah. But uh, we know better. Um, Emmanuel, uh, again, points out that without the will, desire can go astray, right? But think about any desire, right? Um, I'm a man, right? There's attractive people in the world, right? Um, I'm also married. What if, what, if, what if someone flirted with me and I desired someone else, right? Human, they say, I have a friend, says, oh, it's okay to look at the menu, right? <laughs> you just can't order anything. And I agree with, I agree, you can't order anything. But my point is... Within our desire, right, because we all have, um, um, we're, we're human, I guess, right? Within that desire, there's one thing to perhaps uh, think about it. It's a totally other thing to act on it. My will, your will, helps us prevent desire being wrong. My desire now, right, um, in that example, is, is, is controlled with will. And, and the desire I have every day is to be closer to my spouse, right? To be closer to, when I was younger, when I wasn't the person I am today, I probably wanted to talk to every pretty girl that I saw. That was my desire and I was driven to that. I'm exaggerating to some extent, but you understand, right? Yeah. My desire now, right? I get off work, man, I can't wait to get home, right? I wanna see my wife. I wake up in the morning and my desire is, uh, hey honey, you know, she's, she's there, right? That's, that's my desire now. but. If I didn't control that, if I didn't have my will, if I just acted on instinct, I might still be chasing every girl within, within arm's reach. Does that make sense? I'm making light of it, but, but is it, is it seem, does it make sense? Yeah. Awesome. How about, um, 
what's this? Intelligence, right? Maybe caught up in criminality. How many really smart people do really bad things? Think about the, think about the intelligence that Bernie Madoff had to put into his pyramid, right? Think about the, the, the knowledge and the, and the experience or the intelligence that these scammers have to do to, to rip us off. What if they took that same intelligence and applied it to the good of society is what he's trying to tell us here, right? Think of all the good we could do with the same energy. Imagination, right, can create monsters of darkness. In other words, we can create anything in our mind. Some of that can be created, like my daughters, and maybe it's just because they're teenagers and I'm an old man now, but they love these movies called Scream. You guys ever heard of Scream? There's six of them or seven of them now. It's like, man, why are you watching that, right? And whoever created that, right? What happens when we um, spend time reading, watching, listening to experiencing evil, right? Scared, fear, what happens? What are we surrounding ourselves with? Negative energy, right? Um, and they wonder why they don't sleep at night or they wonder why they're scared sometimes, right? Um, so don't get me wrong, I'm not judging. You like horror movies? Go for it, right? But, but the imagination can create all kinds of craziness out there, right? Um, memory can fall in deplor deplorable neglect and inefficiency. And then obviously, just like dominoes, things continue to go wrong. He reminds us that only the will is sufficiently strong to sustain the harmony of the spirit. Harmony is a wonderful word, isn't it? Yes. Um, what's another word for harmony? Peace. Balance, peace, balance, right? And 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 it's it's weighing things out. It's it's balancing. We're going to have extremes, but but with harmony, with using the will, it helps us stop those mental reflections when we're in situations. That are negative, right? And maybe that's why some people can can spend time in those situations and not be impacted and not be scared. Um, um, essentially, our contact with others, whether it's, it's whether it's in person or Facebook, right? How many? I, I got the one of the best things happened to me this week. You're not going to believe it. My Facebook account got hacked, and now I don't have Facebook anymore. And I got to tell you, for the first three days. I was having withdrawals, I was reaching for my, ah, ah, ah. So, so now I'm on LinkedIn, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we trade one addiction for the other. But my point is, all that stuff that we, we do in the morning, right, over our cup of coffee or before we go to bed or whatever it is, whatever we're looking at, reading at, listening to, spending time with, um, it impacts us, right? And if we're surrounding ourselves with negativity, um, guess what? We're gonna experience negative things, but, like Emmanuel says, if our will is sufficiently strong, we can, we can dance around the edges of that. We can be exposed to that. We can come into contact with that without letting it infiltrate us and lead us astray. Sounds easy, right? But it's hard, definitely hard. Uh, and I, I realized joking about withdrawals to a sense, but I swear, first few days, it was weird, right? And now I feel like I have all this more time, I have more creativity, I'm, I feel like I'm more productive. Um, so we'll see how long that lasts. Um, you're laughing at me. Um, he reminds us that attunement is an unbreakable law, right? Um, will, however, can impose a disciplinary con control um, over the elements it governs, which is, which is our mind, right? Our will controls our thoughts, our words, our actions. Without our will actually choosing or not choosing, things don't happen or they do happen. Um, and ideally, right, um, if we can control these things, if we can control our will, if we can use our will to make good, better choices, uh, primarily in the service of goodness, it keeps us on track and it strengthens our will. The more time we spend um, imposing um, or, or performing good thoughts, words, actions, right, it, it just strengthens us and lifts us up and gives that force field around us. Because, he says, will imposes disciplinary control, right? With our will, we can control our desire. We've talked about that. With our will, we can use our intelligence for more positive things. With our will, right, we can use our imagination for more positive things. And with our memory, we can, we can build uh, on that with our will. Because, this is, this is my favorite part of the talk, um, if you really focus on it. God conceded will to reason after the being laboriously, right? What does that mean? Worked really hard, right? 
laboriously traverse through the dark regions. What's that? Life, right? Life after life of instinct, right? The dark regions of instinct. What is that? I'm only human. I'm an animal. I'm, it's okay. That's the way I was born. Nonsense, right? It's an excuse. Just like what you told me, right? Uh, you corrected me, right? Because we know right from wrong. But this is awesome. This is awesome. Yes. Laboriously transversed through the dark reeds of instincts on its multi-millennial journey. And that leads us to the page that uh, you read for us, right? And what happens? One life after the next. Laboriously transversing our daily life, right? Down on the bottom left, right? Created all of us, each of us, simple and lacking knowledge. Simple and ignorant, as they say, right? Not just me, not just you. Christ himself, right? Created just like that. And over lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, a mistake-ridden existence in that first third, right? Where we are right now, right? In that third order spirit, right? Laboriously transversing life after life to ultimately, right, becoming pure, Christ-like perfection. That's our destiny, right? People ask me, do you believe in destiny? Heck yeah, <laughs> but I got a lot of free will in between that can make it painful, make it long, right? But I know, I know where I'm going, right? I'm, I'm gonna evolve, but man, it hurts. Man, it's hard. And most of that I create myself by my thoughts, my words, and my actions. Being more tied to my ego and my pride than to the life that Christ shared with us. All right, enough of that. Don't beat yourself up. We're all on the same path. Um, so how do we progress? Let's talk about the good news, right? The law of labor. What does that mean? Wake up every day and be useful. Doesn't mean you have to make a lot of money. Doesn't mean you have to have a job. Doesn't mean um, you have to, uh, to, to support other people necessarily. It means make yourself useful. Get up, make your bed. Ever see that uh, commencement ceremony? There's a the Naval Academy, I think. And the, and the guy talks about, start the day off right, make your bet. Because <laughs> then you can say you did something, right? You, you did something, it starts the day. So do something every day, help somebody, help yourself. The law of progress, right, tells us we're gonna make mistakes regularly. But we can learn from them and we can evolve and we don't have to make the same mistake twice, right? We will, perhaps, maybe a hundred times, but over time we will progress. Seek and you shall find, Emmanuel reminds us. Actually, I'm sorry, this is from um, the gospel, uh, chapter 26, I believe. Seek and you shall find. What does that mean? Are we, are we provided everything we need? Absolutely. It's there. Is it always obvious? No. Sometimes it's not even what we want, what we think we want, right? We're praying for something else. We're trying to accomplish something else, and then life happens. And what we need has been staring us in the face. For some time, what they're telling us here is, you gotta, you gotta go look for. It. You gotta, you gotta open your eyes. It's not just gonna solutions are not necessarily just gonna pop in front of you. And, if, and even if they do, if you're not looking and paying attention, you will, you will miss them. Um, labor and you shall produce, right? The law of labor again, and, and it boils down to or filters down to we become the children of our deeds, right? Thoughts, words, actions. If we think about it, we talk about it, if we talk about it, we're usually going to do it. So how do we make our deeds better and better every day, right? How do we create our own fate, right? Because ultimately, we are the creators of our own fate. We are in total control of what happens today, what happens tomorrow, what happens in the next life, right? Because of the, the choices we have today. Um, this is important, right? We, we talk about this a lot, and I don't know if we always spend enough time on it. Um, we talked about the extremes, right? Uh, simple and lacking knowledge and pure. All that stuff in between. How many lifetimes is that? Anybody know? We don't know. Could it be 100? Could it be 1,000? Could it be 5,000? I know this for sure. Those number of lives are determined by us, right? The more we can evolve our, and elevate our morals and our, and our, and our, um, our actions and our deeds, the more efficient that's going to become, right? The person I am today is more doing that more expeditiously than the person I was 20 years ago. And 20 lifetimes from now will be more expeditiously than this lifetime. But who knows how many that's gonna take. Um, we're reminded that happiness is tied to our willingness to do good. 
What does that mean? Our willingness to do good. Right? How much, how willing are we to do good for others? How willing are we to put other people first? What did Christ teach us, right? Love our enemies. He didn't say invite them for dinner and give them a hug, right? Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is, is um, think of a person that, don't spend too much time, but I don't want to bring you down, but, but think, of a, think of someone that maybe did you wrong at some point. Have we prayed for them? Have we wished them well? Do we love them in that sense? Right? Do we love them in that sense like Christ taught us, right? He was murdered, right, on the cross. And what did he do? He prayed for the murderers, right? He prayed for the soldiers that were, that were killing him. Asked God to forgive them for they know not what they do. So, again, you don't have to invite your enemies over for dinner. You don't have to loan them money or, or necessarily um, physically help them. But we should... Pray for them. We should wish them well. We should, we should pray for their happiness, pray for their ability to evolve. And that's what that tells me, right? Happiness is tied to our willingness to do good. Not just opening the door for the little old lady or letting that semi in front of me today so nobody died, right? Um, but praying and hoping for everybody else to, to have the same opportunity as you do to, to evolve and, and get past the things that are bothering them. So finally on this slide, right, the guilty and unhappy spirits can always save themselves. It's up to us. How many of you know ornery people? Like no matter what, they're just cranky. Like they, they just, they're just mad. My grandmother was like that for 22 years. Her dad, her husband died, my grandfather, and she hated God until the day she died. Hated everybody. It's like the, the, the I think Peter showed this video to us one time. The guy's in prison, right? And uh, he wants out, he wants out. He spends years and years not wanting, wanting to get out. And at some point, for some reason, he touches the door, right? And the cell opens. It was never locked. We're not locked where we are right now. If we're not happy, if we're doing the wrong thing, if we're living wrong, if we're not where we want to be, there's nothing locking us in. We have the ability to change our I call it tapes, tapes, change your tapes, right? Because, you know, you're raised, you're a kid, you're indoctrinated in some way, you know, uh, what you grew up hearing. And, you know, 56 years old, I still play some of those tapes that aren't so good for me, right? We can change our tapes anytime we want. We can change our, our situation, right? Um, and that's what they're telling us here, right? If we're not happy, if we're guilty of living wrong, right, we can always save ourselves by these things, right? We have the ability. You're not stuck. Feels like we're stuck though, yeah, sometimes? Feels like it. But where is everybody tonight? Here. I guarantee you there's more fun things to be doing on a Thursday night, right? Is it football season yet? No, I don't know. What, what sport's going on tonight? Is it? Yeah, all right. But where are you? You're here, right? So no matter how much we beat ourselves up and how much we, we can get mad at ourselves and, 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 and feel like we're doing not the best we can, he showed up tonight to listen to, to this guy, right, to share a message. And by being here tonight, right, you got a message, you got a lecture, you're going to get, uh, we're going to have vibrations, you're going to have a pass, right? Guess what? You leave here elevated with more energy, right? Your force field is up for another week. And you know, I'm gonna leave here tonight, I'm gonna make mistakes, guaranteed. But I got a fresh start. Because as soon as I walk in that door, I can feel it, right? I can just feel like I'm walking into, I'm slicing through positivity, I'm slicing through um, uh, good energy, right? And I leave here better than when I come. So good for us, right? Yes. <laughs> then, if we don't, if we don't um, change our tapes, if we don't change our energy, if we get stuck in, in um, lower energy, right? What, what they remind us here is our lack of willingness, strength, and courage, right? Are the most common deter determinants of that unhappiness, right? If we, if we don't try to strengthen our will, if we don't try to develop courage, um, that's going to keep us down and out. Uh, longer than it needs to be because our happiness depends again on our willingness to do good 
And, and, and the way this ties in, right, to these multiple lives that we talk about, to reincarnation, to, to this evolution of the spirit, is, is think, think of our body right now as a prison, right? My spirit is tied to this body via the perispirit. Whatever my, my mind, right, my thoughts, my words, my actions do in this lifetime, it, it's, it's, it's marked on the perispirit forever and imprinted on the spirit, right? Um, until another life, right, where I have the opportunity to correct for it. So it's through, it's through our actions in this body that determine the impact on the spirit for, for lifetimes to come. And the best way, right, to strengthen our will is what? What do you think? What do they teach us in the gospel? Right? Pray. It's really hard to do the wrong thing when you're praying. Try it. Think of something you shouldn't do and try to do it and pray at the same time. I tried. It's hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's really hard. Um, because prayer inspires the will. It inspires our willingness. Right? It uplifts us. It encourages us. And the best part is it draws good intention spirits towards us. Um, when, we're, when we're praying positively, when we're, when we're trying to connect to God or connect to our guardian angel, asking for courage, asking for strength, um, asking for direction, um, it brings positive energy to us, positive spirits to us. If I'm, instead of that, when I'm down, if I just say, I'm just going to go to the bar, I'm going to get some Johnny Walker Blue, and I think I'll smoke a cigar, right? As I'm sitting there, down and out, um, um, what am I drawing towards me in that situation? Probably some other negativity, right? So let's spend less time on the vice and the things that necessarily feel good to our senses and more time trying to connect to positive energy. Because when we do that, it gives us uh, enlightenment to become what they call the instruments for carrying out God's law of love and charity. Um, and I don't pray enough, I, I have to be honest. Um, what's one hour of your day? That's 4%, roughly. Right? I don't spend 4% of my day praying. But it's such a small number, right? I think I could spend more time every day. My wife's amazing. Um, she starts her day with meditation and prayer. She uh, has a couple of different prayer sessions throughout the day. Not long stuff, but she connects with, with internet stuff. Uh, there's a WhatsApp group. There's a couple groups here. Um, and she ends the day the same way. Um, she's my idol. I want to be just like her, right? Um, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, she spends at least 4% of her day. And she's peaceful most of the time. She's calm most of the time. Right? I'm sorry, I'm bragging about my wife. I, I gotta stop. But my point is, we all know people like that, right? Um, it doesn't seem like it takes her a lot of effort. Now, if you ask her, if you talk to her, she'll tell you it's a lot of work, right? It's, it's, it's hard. She's gotta make the time. She's gotta really, even when she's down or doesn't wanna do it, she forces herself to do it. But my point is, is, is um, I think the more we can spend time on that, um, and we all have examples of people like that. Some of you are in the room, you know who you are. Their lives just seem more tranquil, more peaceful, more balanced. Um, so I would encourage all of us, myself included, to spend more time um, praying. All right, we're almost done. Um, almost. Um, and this is where it gets a little preachy, so I apologize. And again, it's not me. This is from the gospel. They're telling us how to pray. They're making suggestions on how to pray. So you want to pray more. You want to make 4% of your day or more praying. How should you do it? Well, the first thing they tell us is don't make a show of it. Right? Do it in private. Don't worry about the length of your prayer. Right? I have uh, teenage daughters. And uh, still to this day, when they pray, um, it's almost like they're, um, they'll go on and on sometimes because they want to make sure they're, they're saying enough. Right? They're still formulating this. But it's not the length of the prayer, it's the sincerity and from the heart. Um, we're instructed that we should pray with humility and we should start our prayers uh, forgiving those that we're mad at or that might be mad at us. If there's any drama in our life, any angst or, or issues with others that we haven't resolved, as we start to pray, we should start by forgiving them, um, praying for them, uh, uh, and then proceed with whatever we what's in our heart um, because by doing that um, um, if we have that negative sentiment in our hearts it's contrary to the whole idea of charity luckily for most of us I bet we don't have a lot of people that you know we don't have a lot of enemies I would think I hope um, but we should start that way and the effectiveness of prayer in the gospel um, 
from this chapter talks about um, it's most effective when we believe that we're going to receive what we're praying for. Not the lottery number, right? But, 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 but what are we really praying for? If you think about it, most of the time we pray, right, is typically, I think, maybe I'm wrong, is there's something we're not sure about. There's something that may not be going right. And a lot of times it's about the courage to get through something, the strength to persevere, right? Um, but not the new bike or the new car or the, the lottery numbers. But if we can focus our attention to believing that whatever we're praying for is going to happen, it's more effective, right? And it demonstrates our trust in God. How, how many of us really can say, um, I hope you can say, because I, I want to say it, but it's hard. I, do I always 100% trust in God? I don't, right? i am still got this ego. I've still got this thought that I can fix everything, right? I, I can take care of my own problems. Um, but in this prayer process, if we really start to believe what we're praying for and we really trust in God, it, it, it goes a long way with things happening for us, is what they tell us here. <clears throat> and most importantly, they say here, is believe that God will grant you what you need to get through something. So you're not praying for necessarily the outcome, um, necessarily. You're praying for the courage, the patience, the resignation to persevere and endure whatever it is you're going through. Um, and that part, <clears throat> I'm getting better at that. I don't find myself praying for things or outcomes. I, I, I find myself praying a lot, first with gratitude for God um, for being here, right? and then for courage, um, courage to connect. It's very hard for me, uh, and I hope easier for you, to connect to, to positive energy. Um, I, I know I'm surrounded by it. I believe that. I also believe I'm surrounded by negativity at times, if that's, it's, if that's where I'm spending my time. But, but what I find myself praying for is, is the ability, the courage to, to really connect. Because um, for me, that's always been hard. I definitely believe in God. I definitely believe in I have a guardian angel. But, but getting over my ego to solve my own problems, letting go. You know, if you've ever been to a 12-step program, what do they say, right? Let go and let God, right? Um, one day at a time kind of stuff. Um, and as many of those meetings as I've been to, um, it was really hard for me. Uh, still to this day, to let go and let God, because I want to fix everything. But I know this for sure, that uh, as I pray for the courage to let go, and for the courage to trust in God, it gets stronger every day. So I'm not preaching, I'm just sharing my experience that, that the more I try, it's getting easier and easier. Uh, just not as easy as my wife makes it look, okay? <laughs> All right. So, um, he, he all, they also remind us that um, that that it's important to believe that God's going to provide us with the means to help ourselves, right? We talk about this all the time. Um, um, we don't always get what we want, and what we want isn't really always what we need. But if we can truly believe that God's going to provide what we need, right, or the means to help ourselves, right, we're going to get the ideas, we're going to get the inspiration, the intuition is going to be given to us from our guardian angel we're going to follow the right path as we can connect because we know that uh, um, God's definitely going to help those who help themselves and and the last couple sentences here right the last sentence is you know don't pray for a miracle right um, without applying the effort you've got to put the work in um, you're not just going to miraculously solve all your problems without putting in the work and we're reminded here that prayer is an invocation um, we can pray for ourselves, we can pray for others. It's essentially a request, an invocation um, that, that positive energy that God um, can come to the aid of those in need. Um, and it, it's not always for ourselves. It doesn't always have to be for someone living or the dead. I love the books that we have in the back, you know, uh, for incarnated spirits and discarnated spirits. Um, this invocation can be broad range, right? There's no there's no right or wrong thing to pray for necessarily. But be sincere. Don't be overly long about it. Um, and just believe that the outcome will be there. So finally here we talk about our problems, okay? Because there's problems that we can we can control, right? Or we bring on ourselves and there's problems that we can't control that we're just it's just there. Nothing we can do about it. Right? What list of problems do you think is bigger? The ones that we can control or the ones that we can't control? 
probably the ones um, that we bring on ourselves, right? We cause most of our problems, so we're reminded here, right? Um, they tell us that it should be obvious that humans are the authors of most of their afflictions. I don't think any of you would deny that. It should also be obvious that humans could save themselves from their own problems if what? They acted with wisdom and prudence and less from ego and pride. What's, uh, what's my acronym for ego? Anybody remember? Ego. E-G-O. Edging God out. Right? Edging God out, like pushing God away. Right? The more I think I can solve the world's problems or my own problems and I don't trust in God, um, I get further and further away from God, from love. And I'm more tied to material and instinct and, and uh, I'm the man, right? This makes my life harder and harder, right? The more I do that. So if we act with um, wisdom and prudence, love and charity, right? The willingness to do good for others, um, we're going to shorten that list of problems dramatically. Because again, it's hard to have problems when you're focusing on doing good for others and helping others. Don't get me wrong, bad things can still happen, but they're less and less likely. So how can we achieve this? This is a hard one for me. Place a limit on material ambition. I grew up in a house where if you got an A minus, you did something wrong. It wasn't good enough, right? Um, you should grow up and be rich. You should be successful. Work hard, make a lot of money, live the American dream, right? My, my dad's first generation American. His parents came over here on a boat. We all have stories like that, right? Our, our parents uh, left one country, came to another with five bucks in their pocket, right? Um, did whatever they could to, to raise a family, right? That's why I was raised, you know? You've got to achieve the American dream. Um, if you place a limit on material success, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being successful. I'm not, they're not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. But if we simply live for material success, um, what are we going to be most fearful of? I've been here, losing everything, right? Being broke is no fun, right? Especially when you've... you've You've accumulated and you got used to it and then you don't have it. It's a terrible thing. And you live in fear of going without if you can't control that. They also teach us um, reach for spiritual growth and that fear of any downfall material is greatly reduced. If I believe, and I'm not like this, I'm not, I'm not there yet, right? Um, some of you are much further along this path. But if I truly believe, if I, if I live, breathe, you know, eat, walk, sleep, I'm an eternal spirit, and my mission is to evolve, right? To show love and charity towards others, to be Christ-like in my thoughts, words, and my actions. If I really believe that, I could give two cents for, for any of that other stuff, right? Because my true spirit, my true mission, um, I believe it. And if I'm really living that to evolve every day, it doesn't matter how much money I have, what kind of clothes I wear, what kind of car I drive. And I love my car, right? So what does that tell you? I'm, I got a lot of work to do. Make sense? Um, be humble, reduce the impact of your pride. Does it really matter what people say about you at the end of the day? No. But we listen to them, right? We let that drive us to all kinds of crazy stuff. I try to avoid gossip in the office now. So easy to get caught up in other people's complaints. Um, <laughs> right? It is, right? Practice the law of charity, right? And reduce... Slander, envy, jealousy, quarrels, and dissension. If we can do more of that, we achieve uh, more of that, right? The living a better life. So the advice that we're given is uh, to become a follower of the way. Remember, um, Christ wouldn't call himself a Christian, right? He was a Jew, right? He was Jewish, old school, right? Orthodox, right? Um, he taught the good news. He taught... The gospel, as we call it, he, he exemplified for us how to live. One of my biggest, um, um, I don't know what you call it, I want to say um, issues with Christianity is the, is the amount of energy we focused on the crucifixion, right? Don't get me wrong, the crucifixion is pivotal, it's important. I understand how that plays into um, traditional Christianity, if you will. But but the real gold, right, the real meat on the bone of Christ was the way he lived, right? Yes. The way he lived. Forgiving, helping, praying for, for others, doing whatever he could to help. Um, 
let's pretend none of you believe in Christ for a minute. Let's believe I tell you the story of Christ and how he lived, right? And then I ask you this question. If everybody lived like that, you think the world would be a better place? Absolutely, right? Forget about religion, philosophy, all this stuff. If we just spent more time as a society, as a, as, as a people, living or following the way of Christ, there would be less war, there'd be less uh, violence, there'd be more harmony, right? More balance, more peace. Um, it'd be amazing, right? So I will leave you simply with, with this, right? We know that spiritist, spiritism teaches us uh, the way that Christ lived, right? Um, that's the best way, the best example of how to live. So when you're feeling down, when you're feeling doubt, when you're in question, when you're beating yourself up for wrongs, um, just envision this, okay? Think about the way he lived. Think about the love that he showed the world and, and know that you deserve it, that you're entitled to it, that you were promised it, right? Everything we need, everything you need is here for us. And all we have to do is do our best to connect um, to that love and that peace that Christ taught us. Allow ourselves to be surrounded as much as possible uh, with forgiveness for ourselves, for others. And um, don't worry about what you did yesterday. Yesterday is over. Right now, in this precious present moment, we have the ability to change and to follow his life. Sorry. Uh, very powerful. Thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate you letting me share uh, what I was asked uh, to learn to teach you. So thank you.